Easter is approaching, so I wanted to share with you a classic Easter dessert from Germany, the Osterlammkuchen, or Easter lamb cake. The one I'm sharing with you today is a lemon-flavored sponge cake baked in the shape of a lamb, and traditionally it's decorated with powdered sugar. But I'm also going to show you a variation where you make a Swiss meringue and you pipe it onto the cake to look like sheep's wool. So join me today as I show you how to make this classic Easter cake, as well as explain the symbolism behind why a lamb-shaped cake is eaten on Easter. And make sure you stick all the way through. You won't want to miss me using a blowtorch to toast the meringue. Let's get started. Before you begin, you'll need some kind of lamb cake mold. The recipe I'm showing you today fits a 0.7 liter capacity mold. I bought this one on Amazon from Nordicware. It's cast aluminum and is from their vintage bakeware line. I've linked this one below. Because it's not coated with non-stick, the directions say that it needs to be seasoned before each use. You can do this by spraying them with cooking spray and baking them on a baking tray for 15 minutes in a 400 Fahrenheit or 200 Celsius oven. And once they're out of the oven, wipe the oil out and let them cool while you make the batter. To make the batter, put 200 grams or one and three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar that has been sifted and make sure to sift it after measuring if you're using cups into a large bowl with 200 grams or 14 tablespoons of softened unsalted butter, the zest of one lemon, two teaspoons of lemon extract, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Then you're going to beat everything together until the butter and sugar are well creamed, and then you're going to add in four eggs one at a time, beating well after each addition. A cake in the shape of a lamb is eaten on Easter to represent Jesus, who was called the Lamb of God in Christianity. The Jews in the Old Testament used to sacrifice lambs on the temple altar in repentance for their sins. When Jesus was born to the Virgin Mary as both man and God, he came to earth to save mankind for their sins as the Lamb of God. He died on the cross in expiation for mankind's sins and then rose from the dead three days later. This resurrection is what Easter celebrates. All the way back to the very early Christians, lamb was roasted for the Easter celebration. This is still practiced in much of Europe today, though in some places, like Germany, a lamb-shaped cake has taken the place of the actual lamb. Evidence of lamb-shaped cakes dates back to at least the 16th century. Now back to the cake batter, whisk together 280 grams or two and a third of a cup of all-purpose flour and two teaspoons of baking powder. Then add that to the wet ingredients and only beat it until just combined so as not to activate the gluten in the flour. And then briefly add in four tablespoons of milk. The most traditional lamb cake in Germany is a simple vanilla sponge cake dusted with powdered sugar. Though flavors and variations have been added over the years. The cake in this video is lemon flavored, but you could leave that out for the more traditional vanilla version. I'll also show you a variation where you pipe Swiss meringue on the cake to look like sheep's wool. Now you're going to grease the pans. I find that a solid fat like butter or shortening works best for cake pans that have lots of nooks and crannies. And you don't want to use flour to dust the butter or shortening with. You want something a little bit grainier like semolina. The grainier texture of the semolina will keep it from being absorbed into the batter and that will help the cake release from the pan easier. Spoon the batter into one side of the pan. You're going to put it in the side of the pan that does not have an air hole. That air hole should be the lid that goes on top and that is where the steam is released during baking. You're going to spoon the batter into the pan and then use a spoon or a spatula to pack it down and smooth the top into all of the corners. And don't skip the step of packing down the batter. You don't want any air pockets to form during baking. 
Place the lid on top and then tie each end with kitchen twine. This will prevent the top from popping off as the cake rises. Bake the cake in a 350 degree Fahrenheit, 180 degree Celsius preheated oven for 50 to 55 minutes. And you can check the cake for doneness by poking a toothpick into the steam hole. Unfortunately, this is not the thickest part of the cake though. So I'd err on the side of the longer baking time to make sure it is cooked all the way through. After baking, let it cool in the pan for about 15 minutes or so before trying to release it. Once it's out of the pan, let it cool on a rack until completely cooled down. And then once it's cool, you can either dust both sides of it with powdered sugar, or you can pipe Swiss meringue on for frosting, which I will show you how to make next. For the Swiss meringue, you're going to need to create a double boiler with your metal mixer bowl and a pot. You only want about an inch of water in your pot and you don't want to let it boil. You'll just need a gentle heat with a very slight simmer. To the mixer bowl, add 150 grams or 5.3 ounces of egg whites with 225 grams or 7.9 ounces of sugar. Use your stand mixer whisk attachment to whisk the two together until combined and then put the bowl on top of the pot over the water and continually whisk, checking the temperature of the mixture every now and then. The temperature that you're trying to reach is 160 Fahrenheit or 71 Celsius. This will achieve two things. One, it will kill any bacteria in the eggs and two, it will coagulate the protein in the eggs and help to create structure. There's a lot of debate on the perfect egg white sugar ratio as well as the right temperature to let it reach. After doing a lot of research, I decided to go with a one to one and a half egg white sugar ratio and 160 degrees Fahrenheit. This seemed to be a good consistency for piping meringue for frosting without being too sickly sweet. Once it has reached 160 Fahrenheit or 71 Celsius, remove it from the heat and put it on your stand mixer. Put the whisk attachment on and have it whisk at high speed until it cools down. The bowl will be just warm to the touch and stiff glossy peaks should have formed. For flavoring, I added in about a teaspoon of lemon zest uh, just to complement the lemon flavor of the cake. This is the consistency you're looking for. You're going to take this and spoon it into a piping bag fit with a fluted tip. To create a wool-like look on the cake, pipe little dots onto the cake and pull straight back after each dot to create a little pointed tip on each little rosette. Do this until the whole cake is covered, leaving the face and the ears exposed. And then if you want, you can also add a little bit of the meringue for eyes and I put a little chocolate sprinkle for pupils. And then to bring this cake to the next level of fancy decoration, you can use a blowtorch to caramelize the tips of your meringue. Careful with this though, it can cause the meringue to catch on fire quite easily, as you can see here. <laughs> a fun cake to make and it was also my first time delving into the world of Swiss meringue and that was not as difficult as I was expecting as long as you keep an eye on the temperature it's really pretty straightforward so I encourage you to give it a try if you've never done it before so let's give these cakes a try that's delicious I love lemon cake and the lemon flavor is very prominent in this cake, though not in a sour sort of way. It's very pleasant. And the sponge is dense, but very moist, um, moist and tender. 
and this is actually my first time tasting Swiss meringue and I love the marshmallow like flavor to it though this one is lemony because of the lemon zest in it and it's just the perfect addition of lemon flavor to complement the sponge cake. I think if I had to pick between the two though I think my favorite is the powdered sugar covered one uh, just because the Swiss meringue is very sweet so it just depends what kind of dessert you're looking for. If you want the little, a little bit more of a subtle sweet flavor or if you want something on the sweeter side, then I'd go for the Swiss meringue. Also, it is fun though just to have that Swiss meringue. It's kind of a showstopper type dessert with the piping and the uh, toasted quality of the meringue with the blowtorch. So I encourage you to give this a try. This would make a beautiful dessert to bring to an Easter celebration. I wish you all a very happy Easter and if you'd like some more lemon dessert inspiration, check out these two videos here and I will see you next time.